Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu uh, Dear brothers and sisters, inshallah uh, Welcome to this webinar uh, Hosted inshallah ta'ala uh, by uh, Brother Hamidu in uh, Bangladesh So Jazakallah khair for always hard work in the preparation for um, today And uh, will also um, be joining us tomorrow because um, he'll be busy as well preparing all the slides for the second webinar, which will be on rewilding. So may Allah subhanahu uh, bless him and keep him safe and secure and his family. Amen. So um, today we are focusing on the importance of rewiring. Why Heartsea International looks at the importance of um, rewiring. Uh, it's the first principle. Uh, that we focus on and it's the key one because unless we rewire unless we see correctly uh, and think differently uh, and hear correctly um, it has either a positive or a negative uh, impact on everything around us and the fact is is that as I keep on saying, is that we are in a crisis of perception of how we are seeing the world. And when I say a crisis of perception, um, what then do I mean? Well, we have to learn about history. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran uh, asks us to, to, to make deep the fakul and to study history and he gives us many lessons uh, about how history has unfolded and basically one of the key lessons is is you know in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, has left many occasions uh, ruins of large empires which were once empires and dominant and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding then us to go back to, to look to reflect why why did that empire why did that global system uh, fail and the simple answer is because it was a system which wasn't following the divine order and the only system that will really survive inshallah ta'ala and can be uh, totally accepted is um islam because it uh, establishes universal laws, not just uh, in the universe, in the cosmos, natural world, but also uh, on earth as well. And it's on the earth where it is our responsibility as the Khalifa uh, to establish these laws. So this crisis of perception in how we are seeing the world. So, okay, so... Um, we need to be able to uh, so rewire. We need to be able to, to, to see the world differently. And what I mean is through the Quranic lens. Okay. So, and it's not just me saying it. It's it's when you sit down and you work with and, and with, work with the academia who are non-Muslims, when you work with uh, and, and study and engage with neuroscientists leading uh, neuroscientists and when they write books about this and, and they've spent many years researching uh, they're, they're telling you very clearly that since roughly the 17th and 18th century there's been a dramatic change what is this change in, in how we are seeing the world and so that we are seeing the world through a way that everything is dis everything is um disconnected whether we look at politics whether we look at economics whether we look at the environment whether we look at education uh, social everything is uh, disconnected and it's confusing um, mankind because this is going against our our fitra okay so when we uh go on to the news and we see so many issues today uh you know globally fact is we know that these 
issues are going to increase because as Muslims, we are in the end of times and we know we are in the in the end of times and not everyone would agree, particularly if you're non Muslim, but the majority of mankind that have their eyes open understand something is seriously wrong. Uh, and believe me, there's lots of people talking about it. Uh, but we, as Muslims, we have the answer. We have the blueprint. It is there. It's in the Quran. But we're not seeing it because we're not. We haven't rewired ourselves to see through the Quranic lens. It was there. And so research is showing that since the 17th and 18th century, that was the birth of Western civilization that has now completely dominated the world. Okay, that's very important to understand. So when I talk about social, economic, political, um, educational environment, these are symptoms of uh, a greater issue which is the crisis of how we are seeing the world so once we rewire ourselves then we can start to look for solutions because if you look at globalization okay uh we then the only way that we can the only way that our brains can understand to solve issues is by seeing it through a way that we see it through ways of relationships and connections, which might seem strange, which, which might seem new. It's only because we haven't been, we haven't rewired yet. But that's how the world really operates. Uh, and it's there, clearly, in the Quran. It's there in the teachings of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. So, yes, we are in a crisis of perception of how we see the world. Okay, next slide, please, Hamadon. So we are living in a world where everything we do and see is separated in so-called silos. Okay, so I've said to you, our education system, our workplace, shops, politics, even religion and uh, environment. So our education system. So the key thing is the system. Okay, so again... When the last subhanahu wa ta'ala asks mankind, commands mankind to, to go and to see how previous empires look at the ruins, how look what's left, what happened to them. We, we, we should be asking questions. The Quran is asking us to reflect to ponder, to, to, to think what happened is because the system of la ilaha illallah was not established. But the earth has to uh, progress. The earth has to uh, go forward, okay? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything. We are not the key uh, creatures, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything as an ummah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until such time that he decides, will make sure that everything is still uh uh, moving that everything is still operating and so he will of course put someone uh, in charge whether it is the Muslim and clearly we haven't stepped up to the mark and clearly what we are seeing now is the 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 the, the system that is in charge although it's not the correct system um, is is now in charge and and that's why as part of it while we are in, in this crisis okay because the system that would only solve the global issue starting with ourselves because the last subhanahu wa in the translation says that he will not change the condition of a people until hatta they change that is within themselves so until we establish that system and this is part of the principles of heart c in the redesigning and then the re-establishing Okay, the first principle is the rewiring, and sadly, what we are also living in a world is where everything we do and see is separated, even in our maktab, in our madrasas, in our dalalooms. Again, we have been influenced and conditioned by Western society that even our Islamic sciences are all uh, in silos. Okay, like in school, we have geography, maths physics, biology, all separate. 
even in uh, Maktab or Madrasa or Dalalun, we have fiqh here, we have hadith there, we have tafsir here, we have dua here, etc. Okay, we have Arabic here. It's all one. And the Prophet didn't teach like that. Okay, we know that he would take often 10 ayat with the companions of the Prophet and in that he would deliver everything. In that would be the fiqh, the rulings, uh, the tasawf, uh, everything. And the previous ulama, before the 17th, 18th century, that's how they studied. That's how the institutions were set up, where everything was connected. Of course, there is specialization, but we need to understand it in a collective way. Next slide. MashaAllah, uh, Jazakallah Khair also to Brother Hamidur. Some wonderful slides here, Alhamdulillah. A picture paints a thousand words, MashaAllah. A picture paints a thousand words. I give Brother the key headings, Alhamdulillah, in Bangladesh, and he brings it alive, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. So this is not how, as I said, the world was. This is not how people saw the world. So when we look at ulama. Okay. Naturally, we are conditioned to think it's the ulama, just the Islamic scholars. But no, the ulama were Islamic scholars of Islamic sciences, but they were ulama of physics, maths, chemistry, uh, architecture, uh, farming. Okay, uh, but they saw the connections. So it's like a, um, it's like an artist, okay, painting an oil picture. He's he's looking at everything. Okay. Uh, it's not disconnected. So it's only since around the 17th and 18th century where we have been conditioned, we have been programmed to see the world in a different way. And it's this conditioning, dear brothers and sisters, and this programming that is having severe mental, you know, physical, psychological, uh, uh, negative traumas, effects, on us, this is why there's increase in depression, um, suicide, uh, mental disorders, uh, stress. It's affecting us, okay? Because this is we're living in a world which is not natural, and it's affecting us. And then we go into the cities, and we see things. We th we see buildings in in you know in in triangles with points and vertical and squares and rectangles. It's sharp. It's it's what it's 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 nasty. It's 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 it, it affects us. It affects us. That's we don't see curves. We don't see geometrical patterns like we would see in the natural world. And indigenous tribes cultures before that's not how they lived. But things changed dramatically, as I said to you. When did this change take place? With the birth of Western civilization. That's important. Next slide. So research shows that the change took place around the 17th and 18th century. Okay, so what happened? So Western civilization expanded. Okay, it began where? It began in Britain, Europe. And then the colonization took place. So the globalization of the world today is, in fact, a silent colonization. But it's not just a colonization of lands and a colonization of resources. It's a colonization of hearts and minds. So we are in a war. And the battle is between Huck and battle, truth and falsehood. And it's a battle to win hearts and minds. So even if we study until today, in America, they have Columbus Day. So many Americans still believe that it was Columbus that founded America. Okay, this is not true. Okay, Great civilizations were there in the uh, Americas for many, many hundreds of years. Advanced systems, advanced ways of living compared to even in uh, Egypt. But we've been conditioned to see this. So it was the white man going into America and dominating over the natives. But it was the natives that, because they were living with nature in harmony, 
they, they were following the system that they understood at a particular time. That enabled them, okay, to, 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 to rise and to become powerful, advanced civilizations. But we're not studying this, okay? We're just accepting what we are hearing and what we are seeing, okay? So we need to make a connection. This Western civilization, what is it? So it is the birth of the Dijalic system. Because we have to now connect all of this to the famous hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when the angel Jibril came, ﷺ came, just to summarize what Islam meant before the demise of a well beloved messenger. Peace and blessings be upon him. And it wasn't just what is Islam, Iman, and Isan, then it continued. And that continuation of the famous hadith is to explore Islamic eschatology. Next slide. So the birth of Western civilization on one hand and the Dijalic system on the other. So before Western civilization, okay, across the world, uh, indigenous tribes, cultures, the, the way of life was always in tune with nature. Okay, They always uh, understood that there was something greater. Okay, um, And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has sent messengers and prophets across the world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only mentions just a few, a few of them in the Quran. But every part of the world has received a, a messenger, uh, a prophet. Uh, and, but over time, things have changed. Okay, and people have been flipped over by shaitan and gone in, in a different direction. But one thing is for sure is before Western civilization, at least we can say that mankind was in harmony with nature. They were connected to nature. They were connected to the forces of nature. So they took, but they also made, they made sure that they had to work in harmony with the natural world. And there was a greater being there. Okay. Today we see with the birth of Western civilization day by day hour by hour religion per se is being pushed and shunned to one side we don't see now you go into london you go into new delhi you go into uh dhaka you go into new york okay into the cities okay these are called sin cities there is no place for uh religion there at all okay and so uh, every other form of idol is there, but religion per se is just kicked aside. So we have to then join the dots, okay? We have to go to the Quran. We have to go to the Hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, okay? And understand what is happening, okay? And the Prophet Wasallam warned us that the Dijalic system, the system, Wonders of the of the of the, the concern uh, and how we need to protect ourselves because the the jail would be coming, and we're just seeing now globally that the system is just coming towards the end. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, okay. And the majority of mankind is not seeing this, and sadly, the majority of Muslims are not seeing this. That's not to say that. A lot of people are not realizing something is wrong, but they just can't make the connection. Okay. Many Muslims are deaf and they're they're deaf and blind. Okay. They just don't want to understand this because they are in love with the dunya. They are connected to the dunya. And this is being controlled by none other than Iblis. So we have two choices, and it's there in so al fatiha okay? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. Ihdina salatu mustaqim. And in the end of Surah al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us two paths. And the path of guidance is alif la mim dalik al-kitab ula raiba fi huda lil muttaqin. The path of guidance is the Quran. Okay? 
And to understand the Quran, we have to have a teacher, and the teacher is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we have to connect to the Hadith, we have to connect to the Sunnah, we have to connect to the Sirah. If we are prepared to do that. Next slide. So the crisis is a wrong way of seeing the world. We are seeing the world through Western eyes. Okay. Whereas we need to see the world through the Quranic lens. Now, there are people that are seeing the world and are trying to push an agenda to see the world as a world where everything is connected. Alhamdulillah. That's good. Okay. So there are people that are awake. There are people that are seeing. There are people that are hearing. Okay. They are realizing that this crisis is because we are, are disconnected. And there are books, there are uh, there's documentaries, that there is so much research about we need to see the world through systems thinking. And I support this. I, I, I talk about it. I write about it. 100%. But what they're missing is to see the world through the Quranic lens. And that won't change until we wake up we rewire, we see correctly, and then we then follow the sunnah of the Prophet to, 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 to deliver dawah, to inshallah, to, to deliver that message. Okay. It's like many are halfway there, even three quarters of the way there. They've got their eyes open, they have good character, good akhlaq, they know something's wrong. They just need that last bit of guidance. And the answer, you must now see the world just a little bit more, but through the Quranic lens. And then we're done. Alhamdulillah. And of course, Hidayah is in the, hand, in the hands of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next slide. So the global crisis is showing us symptoms, okay? And if we look at now increase in floods, um, uh, we've got now a heat wave. We've got a massive heat wave here in, in the UK. We've got food shortages. We've got increase in violence. We've got diseases, whatever they are, uh, increasing. Okay, The whole world is in turmoil. And people are trying to work out what's going on. And as I said to you, that our academia that are saying no, it's because we 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 are we need to see the world uh, as one connected whole, okay. But how they are looking at that is is it's taken them them down um, a wrong path, okay. It's taken them away from the Surahul Mustaqim. So we are supposed to be the Khalifa. So you go in any, any bookshop, you go on to social media, you go on to a number of platforms, you know, TV channels, whatever, um, MPhil, PhD, you know, there's so much being written about, yes, we have a disconnection and we need to be able to see things as a whole with systems thinking 100%. Okay. Just on that, where is the Uma? Just on that. Okay. But where are we then to take it further? And this is why you will understand from Hartsey and International that I focus also on the importance of the polymath. The polymath were Muslims. Not all, but majority were. So when we want to talk about, well, the rise of Baghdad okay, in Iraq and the rise of Andalusia in Spain, the Golden Age, it was because the... The, the golden age was was dominated by the Muslim ulama who were polymaths. They could see issues. They studied different subjects, but they connected it with the Quranic perspective as well. And we're not there today. 
So when we look at the principles of heart C, we start with rewiring, then we go to reconnecting with nature, then we go to rewilding, then we go to the re redesigning, then we go to the reestablishment. It's all there for a particular reason. And we have to go through a step-by-step -step process. Okay. No one can say, uh, Sheikh Mohammed, I'm rewired. No, rewiring is like to solve. Rewiring is a continual effort because Shaitan knows he's coming towards the end. Time is against him. And so he now has to continually change his strategy. And so, you know, we have to be alert at all times. So the rewind process has to be continuous daily. As we connect to the Quran daily, we have to connect uh, to uh, working on rewiring, make, making sure that we are completely rewiring ourselves because, you know, news channels, social media, it's all there to, to flip us uh, back into that conditional way of seeing things. Okay? So we have to be very careful. Hence, Heartsea International has come. It's a movement. It's small. But it's there to fight against it in the best way that we can. Okay, we ask Allah Subhanahu to help us. I mean, next slide. So, in order to understand this modern world ruled by the Tajadic system, we need to see connections. Okay, and so we can't see those connections, dear brothers and sisters, unless we have at least put the foot onto the straight path to go through that process of rewiring. And a part of rewiring is the tazkiyat nafs, is the cleansing, okay? Is the purification. The purification from the shirk, the purification from the bidah, okay? Because we simply do not understand la ilaha illallah. If we understood la ilaha illallah, then we wouldn't be in the mess that we are in. And we would have answers not just for the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu wa sallam, we would have the answers for the whole of mankind. So we needed to go back to the beginning. And the first Arabic word is la, to negate. Okay. And if we are not negating, okay, that means that we are sadly involved in shirk. It doesn't have to be idol worship that uh, you know the idols that were around the Kaaba, although that's still there in parts of the world. They are super the protectors. But anything that is taken away from the Qibla, then that is a modern um, uh, uh, idol. I mean, have to be careful. And this is dirt. This is contamination. This has to be taken away. And so the cities where the Tajalic system is, is, is where its heartbeat is, we have to withdraw as best we can. If we have to go into the city, we go in quickly, we do our business and we come straight out. And this is why uh, the reconnecting with nature is so, so cru crucial. And that's why, uh, one of the reasons why it's so much highlighted uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. Because when we see nature, we are uh, then on a journey to connect us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and his attributes. Okay. So rewiring is taskir nafs. Rewiring, if we connect it to permaculture, is zone zero zero. Rewiring is connecting us to the verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the condition of a people or nation until they change within themselves. So rewiring is taskir nafs. But for us, we don't want to go down that path because it's too difficult. It means we've got to work at it every single day. We have the answer, dear brothers and sisters, but we don't want to walk the path of struggle. That's the issue. Next slide, please. So we need to rewire how we see, how we think, and it be, and it and it focuses on uh, the brain, the right brain hemisphere, the left brain hemisphere. And inshallah ta'ala in September, I have an interview with Professor Ian McGrill, Chris, who has done a lot of research on this, 
where the left brain and the right brain hemisphere, of course, they work together, but predominantly the right brain hemisphere in time, since time, has always dominated the left brain hemisphere. The right brain hemisphere sees things holistically, um, has a wider perspective, zooms out, whereas the left brain hemisphere zooms in and specializes. Of course, I said to you, specialization has its place, has its importance. Uh, and so, for example, uh, the professor gives an example, and I can understand this as a biologist and ecologist of a bird. A bird is zooming in to uh, collect a seed, so it's using the left brain hemisphere, but in case of predation, it has to use the right brain hemisphere as well. Okay. So what he has found is, again, why is the brain changing? And he has also said now that the left brain hemisphere has become the master of the right brain. And that change, he said, again, he's connected the dots to Western civilization. And that opens the door for more study to connect us to the, the gel and the right eye and the, and the eye um, being blind uh, that we learned from the Hadith of the Prophet of Islam. Some Hadith say left eye, right eye, but it's all, it's all there. So when we are seeing the world in a particular way, it's because it's the left brain that is controlling how we see the world. And my interview with him is to connect the dots to say, so from the Islamic perspective, this takes us to the Jadic system. So he can understand, then we bring him to the Quran. So that's the reason why I have this interview with him in September. I urge you to, to study his, his books as well. Next slide, please. And the cave of Hera, this all goes back to the cave of Hera when the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to retreat from the sin city of Mecca to go to the cave, to go off grid, and to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect, to ponder about his creation. And it began with the Iqra. And as many of the ulama say, this was a transformation of now a message to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to now transform how you see the world. Now connect the creation that you are engaged with, with the revelation that will now come. So you, now you connect the Al-Quran, Taqwini, the book of nature, okay, and with the revelation, and then deliver that, that message to the whole of mankind. So it all goes back to the first... Revelation, Iqra, Bismi, Rabbi, Kaladi, Khalaq. Next slide. The end, subhanAllah. So that was just a short um, recap, really, uh, about the importance of uh, rewiring uh, and why it is so, so important. You know, the Udama, 100%, and the Udama that I've studied under, they focus so much on Tasuf, on Taskir and Nas, okay? They take us away from the Bida, the Shirak, okay? Uh, and, and, and so for us to go down this path, to be able to, and the whole point of rewiring is so simply to have a relationship with the last Subhanahu to reconnect with the last Subhanahu and of course, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that means a reconnection with the Quran. We're not, we, we don't have a, a relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If we did, well, then we wouldn't be in the mess that we're in. We don't have a relationship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't have a relationship with the Quran. And so if we don't have a relationship, then we must have a relationship with something other than. And that is the problem. And so... We either go down the struggle of rewiring or we give in to the Western civilization conditioning, which is the Tajalic system. And that means then the path is dangerous. Just because we are Muslim does not guarantee Jannah. Please understand that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.